Hey guys, this is an update on the progress of my Gingery lathe project. Last time I posted a video of this, it was it was bolted down, well, screwed down to a, uh, a hunk of plywood. Um, and I was running some removable link V belts on some really rickety wooden pulleys. So I've made quite a bit of progress since then, actually using the lathe itself to do the bulk of the work, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and you can see I got some uh, 3D printed hand wheels. I made those on my 3D printer. Um, the lead screw journals are also with well, the the bearings for the lead screw journals are also that's all 3D printed. Eventually, I am going to replace at least those with uh, some castings because you know being those are printed out of nylon, so there's a little bit of springiness to them, which will you know that'll affect the way this thing cuts. But for now, it's working well enough. Um, I replaced the the little piece of plywood this thing was screwed to. I placed that with a cast piece of concrete actually. What I did was as the concrete was starting to harden I sat the lathe down on it. Um, and that put the imprint of the of the feet into the concrete uh, and then I, I just put some uh, I put some pieces of all thread down into the casting so that then once the concrete hardened I could set it right back in that spot and bolt it down and it wouldn't try and pull the bed out of true because I had the top of it machined flat. Um, as I said, I replaced all of the wooden pulleys. These are all made from uh, castings I did. Uh, the first one was was the one on the on the motor. Um, then I cast a pair of these uh, stepped pulleys, cast blanks for those, and machined them down. And then finally, I I actually just uh, just this past week finished uh, the drive pulley for the counter shaft. Uh, each time I replaced the wind pulley, this thing started working a whole heck of a lot better. You can actually get a little bit of power to the lead screw, to the uh, spindle now. Um, the I haven't done the split nut mechanism yet. Right now, what's driving this thing along the feed screw is just a piece of angle iron welded to a nut and then just clamped with a little mini C clamp to the apron. Um, one of these days, I'll get around to doing the split nut and. And then add, you know, add the power feed mechanism out here. That's why all this stuff is longer. I haven't cut that down to length yet. I'm in the process now of machining the faceplate. Uh, right there, you can, that's actually the back side of it. Uh, the front front side is not quite finished machines. What I what I did was I took once I got the front side cleaned up down to a smooth surface, I put a straight edge along it to test and see is this thing actually cutting true. What I've found is there was some concavity to the front. Um, ultimately all this I think boils down to when I when I actually cut the bores in the headstock. Uh, the setup I used to do that was not great and I got a really lousy finish and I think that's kicking the spindle out of true. Uh, I actually verified that with a, I uh, put a, uh, a dial indicator on the on the compound and and I I stuck the spindle out and I ran it along and then there was definitely there was about five thou it was about five thou in three inches so that's too far out um, to do any kind of precision work with this thing so what I'm, I'm this headstock I'm just kind of considering as a temporary step right now uh, once the face plate's done I'm going to cast another headstock and set of bearing caps and then I'm going to rebore it. But this time I'll actually have this headstock and you know good uh, good set of pulleys and everything. So that that machining operation should go a whole lot smoother. Uh, another little change I made. This is different from the way Dave Gingery designed this. He has you bolting uh, down into the headstock to hold the bearing caps in place. I don't like bolting into aluminum whenever those bolts are going to be potentially removed on any sort of regular basis and you do have to remove these from time to time to adjust the fit on those bearings as they wear because they're just sleeve bearings. Uh, so instead of using bolts I actually put threaded studs down into the headstock and they're just being held down with nuts. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun. This It's a really neat project. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not anywhere close to being done with it uh, there's a lot of work needing to be done to get this thing cut and 
with a better level of precision um, and the those headstock bearings I really need to do something about them because they're a little sloppy there's a little bit of play in them and that affects the way it cuts too it makes it chatter pretty quickly um, but that's uh, that's kind of where it is now so I'll uh, try and put more updates as I as I make them